Welcome to Adapt and Close, and thank you for selecting to watch this video. Um, you will love the fact that you've selected to watch this video because I have something special for you, very important. Um, I've been teaching a couple of um, students about this next generation, and I know some people already start taking it. But I want to break the meat over there that people are worried about this test. The, and my idea is to emancipate yourself from this mental issue and focus on the test. Forget about it being next generation. It's just an endless test. It's a board exams. So go take it like you take any other exams. But the key point is if you failed before, this next generation, you will love it because it's designed to make you pass. I know some people say the board exams is trying to make money. No, they are not trying to make money. They are adapting to the changes that is expected of a nurse going to um, work in a, in a hospital. So certain requirements you have to meet. And so they're making that standard. But it's designed to make you pass. And I'm worried that when people keep on passing, they may probably not be happy. But this does is designed to make you pass. And I will show you why. The other thing too is, if you really want to pass, you need to build up your content. How do you do that? We find a place where you can get a good content. And I can show you, my channel has a very good content. You will never, when you go and look at it, you will never forget about it. And this is designed to make you feel the subject and know it. So let me show you what I'm talking about, and you will love it. You will love the next generation. You will even forget about there's something called next generation. So I'm going to give you some brief overview of, of it. This is the test. This is the test plan. Five hours is not going to change. It's computed, adapted. The length uh, it's changing from 75 to 145 um, to now 85 to 150. And out of the that book, 15 of them is on score. Okay. And so in the first 15, um, 85 question, only 70% will be, or 70 questions will be scored. So you get first 85. So instead of the computer shutting off at 75, now it's at 85. And 15 of these questions will not be scored. Only 70 will be scored. And then the first 70, um, you only get three to six next generation questions, about 18 questions, and it will be case study, not standalone. And the computer does not adapt. I will explain it later. Um, and 52 of them will be standalone questions. I will explain it. This is the key that you have to wait and watch what I have to say. Um, and then if your computer do not shut up at 65, well, uh, at 85, then you continue to the end of 150. And the rest of the 65 question, only 10%. You get about six to seven questions of next generation standalone. And the rest of it will be old question. Therefore, 90% of the test is the old questions. The good news is you will love it. And I'll tell you later. These are the standalone questions I'm talking about. It's not a full case that you have one case with six sub questions on it standalone you may have one question under that case so is that you get a traditional sata the order respond the fill blank which you've been doing the extended multiples and uh, respond that means it's a sort of question but there's a lot of it a lot of questions answers that you have to pick from there's some they will tell you how many you have to pick in the grouping there's a standard drag and drop not like four this one you can have six and seven there's a, a drag and drop table. There's a highlighted question. All of them will come down to clinical judgment, which is bow tie, which are some of them are like standalone where you make a diagnosis and then you come up with the plan. Okay. The, the scoring is usually plus minus. That means you lose a point for that particular question. Or you don't lose a point if you get it wrong. It's just if there's four points over there and you get one wrong, yeah, you don't. You just get a three out of four. Um, 
the 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 plus minus one if they want you to give four points and you choose five questions they will deduct one from it so if you you choose five questions and the, the, the question with four and one of them is wrong you just get three out of four that's the way and there's a rational where you have to do what we call dyad and then triad that means there's a cost and effect where you're going to have a cost they'll give you a, a statement where there's a cost and then there's effect like somebody is hypertension as hypertensive uh, issue because his blood pressure is 170 over 80. There can be one they will tell you patient has hypertension and therefore will have kidney injury or eye injury or retinal problem or blindness. These cause and these are the effect. For the first one is called dyad, where you have one cause and one effect. You have to get the cause right and the effect right for this one. Otherwise, you don't get the one point. For the triad, you need one cause, you have one cause and two effect. You can get a partial credit here. You can, but you have to get the cost right and one of the effect. To get a full credit, you gotta get both effects right. So that's the only one that is difficult a little bit. You have to get both, but the statement will be easy. This is the one I want to show you. Okay. Yeah, there can be multiple responses. There's no penalty. Both time, both bo tie usually. You get like a, um, a question and you have to make a diagnosis, okay? And then you have to come up with the plan or what you monitor. So it's always five points. You can get four out of five. You can get three out of five. There's no penalty for this. So the whole test is going to be your friend. Now you get getting partial credit. You're getting partial credit for everything that you're doing. What is the whole the reason why they're doing this is to get, show you to I mean find out if you know how to recognize cues, how to analyze them, how to hypothesize them, generate a solution, take an action, and evaluate them. Guess what? This is your nursing process in a different form. You've been doing this, but it will give you a bunch of questions to see if you can recognize cues, and if you can analyze those cues to make a plan. And which one out of that plan you prioritized, and which uh, when you prioritize, you look for your solution, and then you take the action. Out of the action, you have to come up with the outcome, and see if your action is effective in the patient care. You've been doing that in the nursing process. So, same thing with a different name. That uh, that's the way they call it. I call it endless. This is the key bulk of everything for a minimum length exam. So a minimum length exam, that means you're getting 85 questions and 15 of them is not scored. Only 70 is scored. You don't know which 15 is scored. So you got to take the first 85 questions right. There's a high probability like 70% uh, of people may finish the test 85 because of what I'm going to say. 15 is not scored. What is the problem? 18 of the question is just cases, case study. There's no standalone. So you get a case, okay? And you have six sub questions under that. So you can get what? Three cases and then you're done, right? Three times six is 18. That means you get 18 questions. Or you can get six cases and then you divide six by what? 18, that means you get three questions under each case. So that's why they said there will be three to six cases. The first 85 questions. If you get six, if you get um, three cases, that means all of them uh, will have six sub um, questions under that. And then you're done. The rest of the 52 is the old generation question, old day, the, what you used to do. But the good part of it, listen, when you get select all that apply, those SATA questions in the old questions, guess what? You can get a credit. If they give you a SATA question, you can get partial credit, maybe three out of four or five out of five. The problem is 
If they tell you how many you should pick, pick it. If they don't tell you, those are the ones you watch for. It's a subtle question, and they, they don't tell you how many you should pick. I will pick those that I'm confident, and I will get credit for those. If the question were four points, and there's four answers, and I'm really sure there's three that I'm sure I'm picking only three, and I get three out of four points. That's the key. All Sarah questions now is worth a partial credit. You will not get zero. It's no more or or non phenomenal. You will never get zero in a subtle question. Guess what? You're more likely to pass under 85 questions. The computer is going to shut down and there's no NGN standalone. So the first 85 questions, you only will get three cases or six cases, depending. And if you get three cases, you get six questions under that. If you get six cases, you get what? Three questions under that you're more likely to pass. The NGN is designed to make you pass. So please, get to your content. Get to your content. Find a place where you can get a good content and be confident and go take this test. If you get your conf uh, content, there's nothing what they're going to show you you don't know. I'm going to show you a question and you will see what I mean. So if you're taking all the maximum tests, that means... Um, going to what one um and fifty questions, and the fifteen of them is on score. So you have like one thirty five. After eighty five, you're only going to get sixty five questions. And guess what? Out of that sixty five, only ten percent will be NGN standalone. Those bow tie and the other thing. That means ten percent of sixty five. It means you're getting six to seven questions of next generation. So why are you worried about the generation? If you don't, the test does not end at 85 and you have to go all the way to 40, 145 and that means 135 question and with 15 of them is not scored. That means going all the way to 150, you only get six to seven next generation. You should not panic. You rather want to see those next generation questions, but they only give you six to seven after 85 questions, six to seven, 10, that means not even 10 questions. And the bulk of it will be the old one. So you better study before you go step and take the test and focus on the next generation, but more on the old one. My strategy I'm telling you is find a Q bank and practice the cases first. Practice those cases, those six question cases. Be able to practice them. If you do them well and you get them, the six question or three in the first 85 and you do well, the computer has to shut off at 85. Unless you fail, you do not do well in the old generation question. If not, then you get um, uh, the standalone, but the standalone will be 10. So... Please don't neglect your old generation stuff. The SATA questions, the, but the strategies, you get partial credit for SATA that everybody is worried about. I get 50 SATA questions, so I'm failing. No, now you can get partial credit. It's none that is, um, you're not going to fail because you get a bunch of SATA questions. You're getting credit. They're designing this test to make you pass. And this is what I want to show you. Evaluating two Q banks questions, the same question from two different Q-Banks. And I will show you how just content can answer these questions. So let me show you um, what, what I have to say. So this is a question from Acha. Okay, this is from a Q-Bank. They are good places, good questions, um, but they're going to say the same thing, and it's all about content. It's all about what? Content, content, content. I'm going to show you. The following scenario apply to it. What? The next one item. So this is the question. I have a similar one in my channel. I've done one similar one because it's a key aspect of medicine. 
that you have to know. And let's care for 85, uh, 56 year old uh, in the emergency department experiencing epigastric pain, shortness of breath, and dizziness. Keywords epigastric pain, shortness of breath, and dizziness. Okay, so there is a 56 year old female who presented to the emergency room with epigastric pain, shortness of breath, and dizziness. You're asking yourself, if you have epigastric pain, why would you get shortness of breath and dizziness? This does not sound right. It's not getting reflux. The client reports symptoms started eight hours ago and had progressively worsened. The client arrived what? Pale, diaphoretic, buzzwords. Those are the things you focus on. The client past medical history is what? Diabetes, okay? And, a, and stated that a blood sugar has been very high. She so think a blood sugar is high. The blood glucose was taken and it was 110. So a sugar is not high. I can tell you this patient is not having hypoglycemic issue or DKA. What should you worry about? Diabetic patient with what? Epigastric pain, shortness of breath and dizziness. Like I said, I have a video similar to that. And it's diaphoretic. What do you think? That is not good. This is a typical presentation of MI, myocardial ischemia for a diabetic patient. You should be able to recognize this cue and that is what they're going to do to you. And so what did they ask you? The five client, which five client findings require follow-up by the nurse? What do you think? Report of epigastric pain? Yes, that is the chest pain that she's talking about. Blood glucose of 110, that is normal. History of diabetes, that is okay. Shortness of breath, yes, that is a heart problem there. It's not a long problem. It's a heart problem now. Progressively worsening of her symptoms. It's not getting better. Report of what? Dizziness. Yes. And organ damage. Pale skin and diaphoresis and organ damage. You see what they've done? Trying to trick you, but you know priority. These are prioritized information. And you submit your answer. You will not see the answer because you needed to answer all the six questions. What happened? The same thing. Which statement, if made by the nurse, will help interpret the client finding? Patient who has a heart problem, what kind of question will you ask? Where, where does the pain go? Classic. Change their non-classic symptoms into a classic symptoms. Why do you want wait to come to the emergency room? Why question? You should not ask a, a patient about why. Why? Why is not good. It's test-taking strategy. What was your last hemoglobin A1C? This is three months ago. It tells you three months stuff. We have acute problem. Patient presented the emergency room. Don't worry about it. Does the epigastric pain radiate somewhere? Excellent. When was the last time you were seen by the physician? Is it relevant? She's having chest pain. Let's take care of the patient. Does the epigastric pain radiate somewhere? That's your priority. Then what? They're not done with you. Six question. But don't worry. Don't panic. Just go with the flow. Based on the clinical data, which problem is the most likely patient is experiencing pancreatitis? There's no way. Just because they have epigastric pain doesn't mean it's pancreatitis. I don't have any data to show that. Acute coronary syndrome, yes. Peptic ulcer disease does not give you shortness of breath and, and dizziness, even though you can get epigastric pain. Osophagitis, the same thing. Epigastric pain, but no shortness of breath and no dizziness. So when you're looking for an answer, it should satisfy whatever they've given you. That is the way you answer question. So this one is the problem and we submit it. Now, this is what is the problem. They said, they're giving you, watch, be careful. They will give you certain stuff. So now the virus, temperature, normal. You don't have to boil down too much or they see if it's normal or abnormal. Patient is tachycardic, respiratory rate is going up, a blood pressure is dropping, a saturation is dropping, and they did a diagnostic test. EKG showed a heart rate of 112 and sinus tachycardia with ST elevation. Now you got to pay attention to things you don't. ST elevation is a diagnosis of myocardial infarction. 
So this patient has myocardial infarction. What is the problem? For each possible intervention, click to specify if it is indicated or not. Somebody have an MI, what do you think? What are you going to do for this patient? Establish cardiac monitoring, of course, is indicated. Obtain a prescription for aburo nebulizer. She has shortness of breath. It's not a long problem. It's not a parenchyma long problem. This is due to pulmonary edema from um, a cardiac cardiogenic issue. And therefore, giving them aburo. What is the side of side effect of aburo? It increase your heart rate. Somebody with the MI, if you increase the heart rate, you increase the oxygen demand of the heart, and you cause more damage. Therefore, this is not indicated. Establish IV. Yes, because we have to give them medication. Prepare to send the patient for CT scan. There's no need for CT scan. Apply oxygen, yes, give them some oxygen and let them leave. And you submit it and you move forward. Keep on going, whatever they give you, just follow it. Now, after the diagnostic, the doctor now has seen the patient and then let's see what they have for us. So physician are provided some order, diagnose the patient with MI. Patient is MPO, they give patient aspirin, nitroglyceride, IV, okay, to titrate it to two or less pain level. Clip the groin, that means shave the groin for cardiac catheterization. Obtain medication history. These were the orders given. And what is the problem? The physician, this is a really good, actually really kill this question. Good question. Very good at attacking every aspect of medicine and uh, nursing care. The physician provide orders for the nurse. The nurse obtain assistance from a LPN, licensed practitioner or vocational nurse. Now they want you to bring your fundamentals, okay? And they want to know, what would you do? Delegate or not delegate? Administer aspirin, 32 milligram, yeah. 320 milligram, yeah, they can do that. They can give most medication. Titrate nitroglyceride via IV infusion? No, that is high maintenance medication. They can do that, okay? Clip the groin. They're just shaving the groin. It should not be a problem for them, right? And then obtain client medical medication history. This is a trap, okay? Be careful. It's a medication history is not an assessment lpn can ask a patient hey what medication do you take i'm not asking you i'm not assessing the severity of your problem i'm not examining you i'm just asking you a question they can ask those questions asking medication history is okay for them so they can do that and so the only thing they cannot do is just a titrating, then you submit it. We're not done yet. Six questions, like I told you. Now, the nurse assess the client two hours after undergoing cardiac, uh, what? Uh, percutaneous coronary intervention, PCA, via the femoral artery. So they did a cardiac cut. If you check my YouTube channel, you get a good information about what you do with cardiac catheterization and you know what to expect. Anybody undergoing cardiac catheterization, post-op, bleeding, bleeding, bleeding. And that's what they're going to do. They're not going to change the content. It's not, medicine does not change that, that much, okay? Client was restless after 2200, after the cardiac cut. Something tell you something is wrong. It should not be restless. I'm not feeling good. The femoral catheter site remain clean and dry, okay? There's what? Extensive bruising over the frank area. Frank area, this is gray tenor sign. That is bleeding after cardiac catheterization. Report no pain. Virus were obtained. Primary air care was provided, was notified. Temperature, 97. Pause, tachycardia, bleeding. Respiratory rate is going up, bleeding. 
blood pressure is dropping, but it's still okay to maintain. But patient is bleeding, saturation is dropping, bleeding. So what is the problem? Based on the data you've obtained, complete the sentence below. The client may show early signs of what? What do you think? DKA, shock, myocardial infarction, atrial fibrillation. There's nothing about AFib in this question. We already know they have myocardial infarction. Complication of myocardial infarction is what? Shock. You can go into cardiogenic shock. And that's what the patient is showing. So and I go cardiogenic shock. And how do you know the patient has cardiogenic shock? What are the early signs? Your heart rate will change. And the patient is restless before your blood pressure. When, they, when you see blood pressure changes, that means they are in class four uh, shock. We want early sign. The question said early sign, buzzwords. You have to pay attention to words in the question. Early sign. It did not say late sign. Late sign, yeah, hypertension, hypotension is a late sign of shock. That is class four. Class one, two um, um, stage of shock, you see tachycardia and restlessness. Therefore, what do we have? We got to submit our answer. So we submit our answer. And let's see what we, how we, how we did. We get all these one, right? Two out of two, right? Let's go back. We get four out of four, right? This is zero one scoring. So you're not going to lose a point. This is another zero one scoring. If you get one wrong, you don't get the point. You're not going to lose the point. We get five out of five. This is also zero one. If you get it wrong, you're just not going to get a point. We get one. And this is another one out of one point. So we get the answer right. And here we get five out of five. This is zero one. If you get one wrong, you get zero. Okay? So this is the way it's done. And we get everything right out of that question. Let me show you another example. Another Q bank. Same thing, same knowledge. Same idea, same content, but presented in a different way, telling you that the content. So same information, look at how it's presented. A client, Ines is caring for a 58 year old client, right? The client arrived in the emergency room with chest pain, chest pressure, pain that radiates to the left shoulder. Classic presentation they've given you. But the other one was not classic. The pain started 30 minutes ago during physical activity. The client relate the pain as six out of what? 10. What is the problem? The client is diaphoretic. Okay, they're giving you all the information. Diaphoretic. What is the pulmonary symptoms? Respiratory rate of 20, SAT 98, bilateral breath sound are clear. Client reports smoking a pack of cigarettes 15 years ago. Vitals, temperature normal, pulse of 48. I don't like it. Rapid show is a little bit low. S1, S2 is head. Bilateral upper extremities pulses are okay. She has no edema, right? He or she has no edema. So, so far, we're looking good. The client reports mild nausea. Abdominal, abdomen is soft. Non-tender, non-distended, bowel sounds fine. The client reports drinking two beers. History of what? Laparoscopic cholecystectomy one year ago. And the client has diabetes and hyperlipidemia. You see, it sounds like the same question we saw. Now, what is the question? We know this patient has MI. Based on what I've presented, the same kind of uh, question. Same thing that you should worry about, chest pain radiating to the shoulder. What is this question is asking? Click to highlight below the finding that require immediate follow-up. That's a priority. So which finding? You have to highlight it. We start from below. I usually start from the 
the bottom because it's difficult to see. And then just basically click on it and just see if it highlight. Drink two beers a day? No, I'm not worried about it. It's pause is 48? Yes, I'm worried about it. He smoked a pack of it's great it uh, um for fifteen years. No, I'm not worried about it. And what is the problem? Chest pain radiating to the left shoulder. I'm worried about it. Okay, those are the so I'm not worried about this. I'll click it. And then patient is diaphoretic. He's sweaty. Yes. Um, chest pain radiating to the left shoulder and his pulse is um, 48. I don't care, like it. Beer and smoking is okay. It does not relate to heart problem. And I submit it. And I'll go to the next one. Which of the following prescriptions should the nurse anticipate? If you think this patient has a heart attack based on what I've described, shortness of breath, chest pain radiating to the shoulder and diabetic patient, well, I need an EKG. Right, and I need I don't need culture and uh, sensitivity. That's not an infection. Blood specimen for troponin. Yes, that's the diagnosis of show you whether there's a tissue damage, muscle damage, orthostatic virus. No, I don't do that. Just because his pulse is going down, you want to do that. They're doing that because they're going to shock. You don't need a urine analysis. I'm just showing you something. The same thing, but they. Writing the question different, the same thing you see on your board about heart attack, they will present in a different way, but your knowledge should stay the same to attack it. The nurse has received the following information from the diagnostic results. What is the diagnostic result? Click on it. You see, mid ST elevation myocardial infarction, sinus bradycardia, abnormal EKG. So drag words from the choices below in the bracket. The nurse understand that the client has impaired perfusion of myocardial tissue. Agent intervention is needed to reduce the risk for what? If you have a heart attack, you are at risk of cardiogenic shock. You can go into hypotension. You will have end organ damage. So what do you think will happen? Heart failure is likely to okay because you can go into cardiogenic shock and you go into heart failure. Cardiogenic shock. And when you are in cardiogenic shock, you can go, the injury to the muscle, can, you can develop dysarrhythmia. So these are, you don't develop endocarditis or aortic stenosis. This is a vessel problem. This is infectious problem. Patient has no infection. Then what? Which of the following prescriptions should the nurse anticipate? When you see select or add apply and they don't tell you how many you should select, this is the one they will deduct point. This is the plus negative point, but you can get past your credit. So select or apply. I'm going to pick those and really 100% sure I know. They don't tell me how many, so I'll pick those I'm confident. This lady who has, or male who has a, a, a MI need aspirin, right? I need to do cardiac monitoring. The same thing we saw, need to get a nitro, right? We have to prepare them for percutaneous coronary intervention, that PCI, and we have to provide oxygen. Guys, it's not that bad. Same thing we saw. The nurse is preparing the client for cardiac catheterization. You should go to my channel and you see this content, a patient going for cardiac catheterization. What do you need to do with percutaneous coronary intervention? For each intervention, click to specify if the intervention is indicated or not indicated. What do you do when you're going to do cardiac catheterization? They give you contrast. This patient is diabetic. His kidney function, a kidney function or is will not be well, will be abnormal. So you got to do certain things. Do you want the patient to eat for cardiac catheterization? Implement MPO is indicated. You want to give them a beta blocker? A heart rate is what? 45. Do you want to do that? Do you want to do that? I don't want to do that. Assess client for iodine allergy. Yes. It's going to get a contrast. 
Review most recent creatinine level. I told you she's diabetic. He or she is diabetic. The creatinine may be no normal. They're going to get a contrast. Verify informed consent has been obtained. You can do a procedure without informed consent. It's not that bad. Then what? The next is provide teaching to the client following femoral artery catheterization. The same thing we saw after cardiac catheterization. What should you watch for with coronary artery stent placement? So she has a he or she has a stent placement. Which of the following client statement indicate? Pay attention when they ask you a question. Don't just read it. There's buzzwords in questions. So pay attention. There's a reason why they're asking you. The next is providing teaching, okay, to the client following the femoral artery catheterization. With they place a stent, so they had they put put a stent in the artery now to open the artery that was blocked. Which of the following client statement indicate correct understand of the teaching? So, I can expect swelling and bleeding at the insertion site following the procedure. No, you should not expect that. I don't want to see that. If I see that, what does that mean? Bleeding. I don't want you to bleed. I will increase my fluid intake for the next 24 hours. Yes, because of the contrast. I will keep my leg straight for four hours. Yeah, that leg that they did the femoral catheterization is not moving for at least four hours, right? My chest pain will get worse before it gets better. No, your chest pain can should you should not have any more chest pain after we did a cardiac catheterization and put a stent. So that is wrong. My healthcare, they said understanding. My healthcare provider will prescribe a medication to prevent blood clot. This is a trick because if you don't pay attention, you will ignore it. The patient at the stent placed in the coronary artery. I know we worry about bleeding, but now they have a stent. If you don't put them on the... Um, a medication that will prevent blood clot, the stent will clog. So they will be placed on aspirin or antiplatelet. So this is good. Then you submit it. You see? Three out of three. Let's go back. Five out of five. Five out of five. Three out of three. Two out of two. Three out of three. Guys, if you need good content, check Adapt Anklers. If you want to go somewhere and get it, that is fine. But just make sure you get enough content. Don't worry about next generation. Minimum questions. The questions you get will be easy. The whole test, you have partial credit. Your chance of passing, I believe, I trust, and I'm betting on it that we'll see higher passing grade and we have a bunch of nurses who are happy. Take care of yourself and never stop charging. Keep charging and adapt and close have your back. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.